Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel, my name is Cordant and we are back for some more Pillars of Eternity with the Triple Crown difficulty settings. So up to this point I think I have done every single thing I could do before continuing our main quest for Act 2, the Hermit of Hadrat House. Uh, the only quests I have left are from the, the White Merch expansion, this is for much later. All of these quests are also for later, none of them can be done right now. And these tasks, same thing. I could continue down the endless paths, but there's really not much point to do it. And currently in level 8 we have something that I really don't like, which are the vampires. And the only thing I have to protect myself against vampires is the prayer against treachery. And this is a scroll, I can't even make it just yet. But this is a spell that my priest will have, that will give everybody in the area immunity to charm and dominated for 25 seconds. And we do need this if we want to fight the vampires, because otherwise it's going to be chaotic. It's probably doable, but it's going to be very hectic and I don't want to risk losing the run to that. So, my only option right now, my only safe option, is to continue on our main quest. So, we were summoned um, by, by Lady Webb to Dunred Row. She is a reclusive woman who seems to know more about me than I know about her. And we've learned that she knew Theos, which is the, you know, the antagonist of the game. And right now, we've done most of this quest, which is pretty much to tell her some information about what we've been doing, which are other main quests. And now I should get to the palace in first fires and attend the hearings as soon as possible. We are able to do this because we got the invitation by House Dominel. So, yes. let's go. Don't really remember what the choices are or the consequences. Uh, so I will just go with what makes sense to me. All right, then. And, you know, we'll see what happens. A place has been reserved for you on the balcony, Cordum, to go to the upper floor. Alright. So I think it's over here. Yep. We received word from Lord Domonel that you would be attending Cordum. The balcony has been opened for you. Right. So these here are the Anamancy hearings. And my understanding is that this is the Duke, Duke Avar Wolfgren. And we have a representative from each of the houses. Uh, I believe this is the Crucible Knights, these are the Dozens, and these are probably. Uh, House Dominel. The room below is animated amidst the heated debate. All the representative groups are easily discerned in the crowd. Well, okay, just what I said. <laughs> Crucible knives, uh, stiff in their noisy armor, sit in one section. In another are well-dressed members of House Dominel, ca casual, watching with the predator's interest. Still elsewhere are the ramshackle dozens, who have made no special effort to dress up for their liege lord. Interspersed are animancers in their academics' robes, with expressions either sour or concerned. Well then, answer me this, Master Barash. If you animancers represent our best hope to cure the legacy, what progress can you demonstrate? As I've said, it isn't about progress, it's about potential. So this is Ramir di Barask, and this is... Well, just an Animancer or a representative of the Animancers. My house would agree, Your Grace. We see great potential in its future. So, House Domonel are apparently backing Animancers. And I suppose your blazing profits during the legacy don't have nothing to do with that, do they, Domonel? You can't have it both ways no more! Animancy goes, or this country goes! Clearly against. So you admit, Master Barask. <laughs> that animancy is no closer to stopping the legacy than it ever was. And this one right now is kind of neutral and also against animancy? No, we've had many promising experiments. Cadman Azo has shown... Cadman Azo murdered a child for a complete failure. We should be hanging him right now for what he done. The dozens won't stand for it. Now, if you guys remember this from the previous quests, uh, Cadman Azo didn't actually murder the child. He was tricked. Uh, Theos, he, he can like leap between bodies with his soul and, you know, kind of make puppets out of the people that he inhabits. So, 
that was a ploy. Cadman Azo didn't actually murder the child. The, the whole experiment was uh, sabotaged by Theos. The, the experiment failed, yes, but his work... There we go. His work was sabotaged. Ah, our new delegate from House Domino. What makes you say sabotage? Uh, let me just read this. All at once the attendees turn their faces toward you. A mishmash of judgment and incredulity. Only the Duke, a wild-looking man with scraggly beard, seems unfazed by your interruption. Okay, so what makes you say sabotage? Okay. I met a false patient in Brackenberry Sanitarium who had tampered with Azo's machinery. Correct. The fuck's that even matter? These are people who would toy with the lives of our children. Indeed. Even assuming there was sabotage, is this Animancer Azo not still accountable here? Okay, and this is where we must tread carefully. I don't want to mess this up. I don't even know what happens if I mess this up, but I want to be fair. Those who know me around here know me to be fair in judgment. So this is kind of um, counting on our benevolent reputation, I guess. Cadman Azo should be held innocent. Those who know me around here... Cadman should be held... Okay, so I can either paint him as innocent or guilty. What are my other options? No, he isn't. This was a responsible scientist who was manipulated. Yes, he is. Cadman has disposition... Uh, ambitions exceed his ethics. Um... Well, I mean, we must take a stand, right? Although I would prefer like a middle ground, you can't. This is a, this is the point where you have to decide. And I think, in my opinion, his experiments are dangerous. He probably didn't go about them in the best way, but I also think that it's necessary. And science, you know, progress should never be impeded. Well, except the ones that are doing it very, very wrong. Uh, so I'm going to go with the first one. Those who know me around here know me to be fair in judgment. Cadman also should be held innocent. Horseshit. These animancers can't be trusted. Look at what happened in Heritage Hill. Our supposed protectors from Crucible Keep can't even clean up the messes animancy leaves. Your Grace, we'd have a much easier time of it if our knights weren't so occupied trying to keep their organization from <laughs> igniting a revolution on our very doorstep. So a lot of bickering. That's typical. Heritage Hill is blood on your hands, Justicia. You turn a blind eye, and look what happens. I have, been, I have been to Heritage Hill since the quarantine. Though the knights were unable to control the damage, it was not animancy, but an ancient machine that caused it. True. The Crucible Knights are blameless here. This was not the workings of animancy, but an ancient device in Ternoneth. Okay. So, uh, is there any difference? I guess... Over here, I'm giving some of the blame to the knights. Well, it is true. They were supposed to keep people safe, so they were unable to control the damage, but it was not Animancy that did it. You've some strange taste in travels, friend. The height of your tails expands with every breath. Okay... Okay, so this is me just going against him, like, very harshly and on the offensive. My word is my oath. I challenge anyone here to find someone who knows different. I ask only that you listen to what I have to say. Make your own judgment. Now I'm gonna go with the second one. I've been benevolent. I've done right. Eh, they might criticize me for being with House Domanel, though. But let's see. My word is my oath. I challenge anyone here to find someone who knows different. I had heard whispers of a new delegate set to attend today's hearing. I admit that your candor was mentioned more than once. Good. Tell us what you saw in Heritage Hill. Okay, well, there's only one option, so... Ternoneth houses an inguithan machine that holds dominion over the flow of souls. It was this machine that made the district undead. Do you think that was the machine's purpose, or just a dire side effect? Kinda shudders. But then... Why would the Inguithans build such a machine at all? Even if it is as you say, we have testimony that a group of Animancers had been spending time there. Surely their tinkering had something to do with this. Okay, okay, let's let's tread carefully. I have reason to believe there were others at the tower who might have done this. There is no denying that they were studying the machine, they did not. Okay, they followed ambition blindly, taking few precautions and allowing personal feelings to get in the way. <sighs> Man, I mean, everything here is true. It, it just depends on how I want to frame it. 
because there were others at the tower who might have done this, like the the leaden key agents. This is like a middle ground that doesn't really say much. And this is just blaming the Animancers. Okay, so I have reason to believe there were others at the tower who might have done this. Animancy has many enemies. You need only look around this room to see it. You're just... you're missing the point! Everywhere there's Animancers, there's disaster! This is very... generalistic. We all know what Widewind's legacy is really about. No, you don't. And it ain't about some sparkling saint from Creed Ceres who's mad because he took a stroll down the wrong bridge! <laughs> it, it isn't, really. Ha! <laughs> wrong bridge indeed! It's about a bunch of so-called intellectuals fucking with the natural order while the rest of us gotta suffer for it! Yeah, so he's blaming everything on Animancy. Is it, though? Should we not take the time to reach a clear conclusion? I mean, what proof do we have? My son and daughter are buried beneath the floor of my house. We don't own no land, so that's where we lay them. My son. My wife let him slip when she was bathing him. Got water in his lungs he couldn't cough up. Yeah. My daughter. We put her to bed one night, and the next morning she wasn't breathing. This hollowborn thing, it ain't ending. And it ain't ending, because we still let these charlatans play God. There's your proof, you damn copper fucker! <laughs> <laughs> I like this guy. Enough, Adric. Lady Dominel makes a point. If it's animancy, then why do the other states that permit the practice not suffer the same fate? Who among us can say he truly understands why the legacy has taken hold here? I can. Oh! <laughs> the Grieving Mother reaches toward your mind with hers. Bring order to the chaos here. I can. The crowd begins to mutter, the sound taking a doubtful character. Right idea, Watcher. Taking this heating by the curly ones. Don't waste your chance. Okay, so again, only one option. Wild One's legacy is the creation of the Leaden Key. Cademan Azo's downfall was their work, as was the tower in Heritage Hill. They want you to do this. They want Animancy to fall. The dull muttering expands into a din of skepticism that fills the hall. I have seen them in the ruins of Erglan Foth, operating machines that disrupt and redirect the flow of souls, near towns like Gilded Vale and Dirford, where the legacy is universal. As a watcher I have heard their dead confess their plot. They are stealing the souls of the unborn. Beasts. Another lunatic at the hearing. Did you remember to lock your sanitarium before you left, Master Barask? The room laughs. This is no laughing matter, bitch. Why are you being like this? Okay, our options. We can go on the offensive. Birth invalids until your womb dries. Well, ugh, this is too much. I think this is what I chose on my evil playthrough. Birth invalids until your womb dries for all I care. You shame your order by dismissing the truth before hearing it, madam. I expected better from a nice one. If he did, for your husband's sake, I hope he at least left some <laughs> brothel unlocked. If, as the dude says, no theory has, m has more proof than any other, what is the harm of hearing... M uh? No, let's go with this one. You shame your order by dismissing the truth before hearing it, madam. I expected better from a knight of the crucible. You must know, friend, that the leaden key is a mantle for small-time ruffians. Oh, no, it isn't. Play. I'm not saying you're a liar. Not yet. But you'd better start making sense of all this. Help us believe you. I really love how... This is just a, a side note. I really love how the lore of the game and the story is built up. Because it's kind of directing my way of thinking and the things I want to say in such a way that matches the options I get. Like this one here, for example. Everything was building up to it. And I, I do like that quite a bit. Okay, so they're not fully believing what I'm saying yet. Help us believe you. Okay. So what's more likely? This is not a, a, a good way to start this dialogue, I think. That the gods are destroying Dorwood for a science practice in many parts of the world. The group of people hate and immensely want to suppress. The leaden key is very real. They are foreigners from a deer and red setters who hate Dorwood and want to see us suffer. This is no proof. Just speculation. 
Let's say a lord is cuckolded by his wife. If he tells her to stop, she'll only want her lover more. But if he spreads a rumor that the lover has just visited a brothel and acquired the pox on his loins, she'll end it on her own. <laughs> Jesus Christ. We all want the same thing here. We want Wild One's Legacy to end. If we work together instead of arguing, we can... Okay. If you know anything about me, you know this. I have been called many things, but never a liar. An honest witness is the best piece of, of evidence you have in this matter. Now, I would prefer to go through facts and evidence. Um, and for that, the only real things I have in my favor would be the first option. But again, this is just speculation and logic. There's no proof. Same thing here. This one honestly gives a very, very real example and a very good analogy to what's going on, but the way it's presented doesn't really hold place in such a hearing. Uh, calling people to work together is not going to work. I'm going to go with this one. I've been benevolent, I've been truthful, so I'm going to I'm going to play on that. If you know anything about me, you know this. I have been called many things, but never a liar. An honest witness is the best piece of evidence you have in this matter. The only piece of evidence. And that, that's also true. The only piece of evidence that doesn't send your kind to the gallows, you mean? You've made an unexpected case, friend. I'll say that much. It seems we have a new possibility to consider, at the very least. How was it you came to learn all this? Okay. How Stomanel provided me with the resources I needed, we owed them a great debt? No. I took a personal interest in the matter and tried to learn what I could. So this is me backing House Domanel, but they don't really deserve me backing them. I took a personal interest, yes. Indeed. This land is foreign to you, unless I miss my guess. Your efforts on its behalf are to be commended. Thank you. But these hearings are about more than Widewind's legacy, even though that is our most pressing concern. Let's say for the moment that I were to take you at your word that our friends in Brackenberry Sanitarium and their peers bear no responsibility for this curse upon my country. I'm curious, what would you do if you were in my position? Okay, and I think this is like the, the final and most important choice. I think, actually, I think this only affects the ending of the game, not any immediate consequence, I believe. So what would I do were I in your position? I would allow animators to continue their work, they explore questions we all wish to understand. If, we would no uh, if we'd know more, perhaps this crisis could have been averted. Animators should be studied in Deadwood, if you don't, someone else will and they will yield great power over you. Eh. The animators of Deadwood have been given too long a leech, this is me going against them. In truth, I'm not completely confident animancy doesn't have something to do with Twilight's legacy. And animancy is too dangerous. So, honestly, what I would like to have is something between option 1 and option 3. Like, let them continue their work, but they need to be under supervision. And honestly, I think some of the problems we've been having is due to um, Animancers going a bit too far. But this is kind of restricting progress, but I think it's also necessary. We've seen people turn into ghouls, we've seen people get killed because of it. So yeah, let's, let's not just let them go rampant. I'm gonna go with the restricted and controlled practice of Animancy. The animances of Deer would have been given too long a leech. The practice should be restricted and controlled. And just who would regulate it? Charlatans like Azo, or fools like Ethelmer, clueless as to what goes on within their own walls. Well, that's also true. Very well. That is all I wish to hear. Not just from you, but from everyone. Many days we've been at this. It is time we put it to rest. I want to thank the delegations for helping me to collect my thoughts. In particular, I want to thank our new delegate, who has given me much to think about, <laughs> and who alerted me to a new enemy I had failed to see. The time has come to choose a direction for the Deerwood. I am ready to make my pronouncement. Let's hope he takes my advice to heart. 
Ramir D. Barash, representing the interests of Animancers in Deerwood, step forward. Your Grace. This is not good, though. This is not good. It occurs to me now that my concerns about animancy may not outweigh its value. Forgive me, your grace. Mm -hmm. We will accept no judgment but our own. This is Theos. What's he doing? <sighs> no! Yep. No, no, wait! Stop this! No, my friend, this is not the way. And Theos just walks out after murdering the Duke. I've given you every chance to end this pursuit. Shall I end it for you? Another time. I am already late. No! Don't fall down! The word, shall I end it for you, ring in your ears. You find yourself gasping for breath, struggling to keep your own balance. You drop to a knee and watch as Theos hurries out of the building. The world dims around you, the screams and clashing of weapons fading to silence. All that remains are the words. Shall I end it for you? Theos stands at the pulpit high above an assembly of robed onlookers. You among them, clustered around a wide, circular pit carved of stone. He addresses a woman bound backward over a large iron wheel overlooking the great stone maw. Many of the woman's fingers and toes are severed, and the bottoms of her feet are charred black. The skin on one side of her face looks like melted candle wax, black and red and seeping, and the angle of her back suggests a spine in ruins. Yet, for all that, her expression betrays little of her anguish. This is her on the wheel. I am already at peace, Grand Inquisitor. Are you? Her eyes are barely open and her words come between strangled breaths, but they are steady. Unbroken. So be it. If you desire no end, you shall have none. I find you guilty of heresy. May the eternal prison bar your soul from passage, for it is beyond redemption. He nods to a hooded, a hooded attendant who begins untying her from the wheel. Cordum was granted dominion of the sleepers. I don't remember what that is. <laughs> You open your eyes to the beamed ceiling of the palace's grand entry hall. The clangs of metal striking metal waft in from outside alongside the cries of the injured as you stagger to your feet. Theos is gone. Aloth overs, uh, hovers over you, worry hatched on his face. Cordant, we've got to get out of here, fast! His eyes dart to the hall. Off to one side you can hear the clinking rustle of chainmail, and you look over to see a wounded guard slumped up against a wall. He is trying to say something, seemingly directed at you, but at first it is too faint to hear. He gathers his breath and manages to rasp out a few words. Lady Webb, she's the only... she must be told. She'll know what to do. Please, find her. Tell her everything. The guard passes out and slides to the floor, still. Well, this is troublesome. Can I can I go into the heating? No. Are you okay, lady? Don't go out there. There's rioting in the streets. Well, I have to. I have to go out, my friend. We have to go back to Brackenberry and into Dunrid Row to seek Lady Webb. Just TCRs, commoners. Just stand still. Don't fight, guys. Don't fight. Everything's fine. Oh, no. Well, I don't think the commoners have much of a chance. Uh, I'm just gonna go out. Oh, I cannot go out through here. More commoners and stuff. Okay, we can go out through here. Ah, uh, maybe I was dumb. Maybe I should have picked up loot from their corpses? I know that's not the, the, <laughs> the correct thing to do, but... 
I'm curious. Can I do that? Can I pick it up? It would be kind of silly, but maybe. They're killing themselves. Uh, this is kind of going nowhere. I cannot loot that body. Let's look at these. Okay, no, no, no. So there, there's really nothing to pick up. So let's just carry on. A lot of blood going around. Okay. Okay. Let's go out. And I can choose where to go. Let's let's be mindful of that. But I'm guessing that this is the way to Brackenberry. Yep. Uh, of course. Commoners burning down the sanitarium because people are thinking that Animancers are responsible for this because an Animancer just killed the Duke. There's blood flowing in the fountain. We have Animancers, dozens. Go on, run before they see you. Hail, Traveler. Oh. I recognize you. You were the one who spoke up at the hearing. What were you just doing? I got a few of the Animancers out of the building to the back. Look at it. Uh, a lot of them didn't make it to uh, make it out, though. Aren't you with the dozens? I was. The things I heard at the hearing today, though, he shakes his head. I had it all backwards. If it was good enough for the Duke, it was good enough for me. I don't care if an Animancer did kill him. It doesn't mean we gotta hold them all responsible. Oh, you can think. This, he gestures at the flames behind him, isn't what we're supposed to be about. I have to go. He nods. Get out of sight. Wait this thing out. Good luck, friend. Okay, well. Let's hope Lady Web is still fine. Yeah, maybe not. Oh, I can loot these. Maybe she's not fine. All of her spies seem to be dead. Which is not a good sign. Oh, but now I can loot. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I think everybody died. Yep. Can leave that. Gotta loot that one, and hopefully Lady Web is still alive. I, I cannot loot you. Oh, I can. Gordon Pina breaking down the house. No. <laughs> uh, more people dead over here. We can loot some more stuff. Okay, more money, more corpses. A lot of money. And I think she's, yeah. She's dead. But her soul lingers on, which could be something good. The Ethic Null, what is this? Oh my god. I mean, this could be important since it's in her, in her drawer. The Ethic Null is a group both fascinating and dangerous, an ancient druidic order. Its beliefs fall well outside what the average person might imagine of druids. Though details are sketchy, the Ethic Knoll would seem to have originated in the White March, as the Order itself consists mostly of Dwarves. Ooh, I like that. The traditional Druidic chants of the Ethic Knoll speak of the people as a collective whole that created the necessary balance, through their strict adherence to the purity of their line. This has been interpreted by historical chroniclers to mean that there was a time where, when only Dwarves were allowed to be Ethic Knoll. Residing now in Twin Elms, records of the Ethic Knoll date back to well before the settlement had arrived at its present name, and in fact, some information places them in Twin Elms even before the Glenfadens arrived. If this is truly the case, the Ethic Knoll are one of the oldest druidic orders in existence. Their beliefs don't conform to what's normally viewed as a druidic viewpoint. Sacrifice, blood, fire, and an intensive drive for balance in all things, well beyond most druidic standards, pervade their rituals. 
Core to this is the dogma that if you want something from the universe, you must also sacrifice something into the universe to maintain the balance. Nothing can ever be received without something first being given. If you perform the sacrifice, your desires will always be satiated. The simplest example of the sacrificial balance is explained to the author went as thus. Say you are one of those ethic no, and say you want your daughter's marriage to go well. You don't want problems. So you ask of the elders what you must do. You are told that the prop uh, you are told that the uh, you are told what the appropriate sacrifice is and then you perform it. In this case, it could be as simple as throwing some coins into lava, giving the metal back to the earth. Sacrificing something that is important to you, right? But the requirement is always different and you don't know what is expected of you until you're asked. The more significant request, the more significant the demand. And most things of true value must be paid in blood. I was told of people removing fingers, toes, even whole limbs. One farmer was reputed to have sacrificed his youngest son. Another good question many people have raised is in regards of the Glanfadens. Why do they allow such a potentially violent, possibly dangerous group to live in Er Glanfad? Why not force them out? Rumors are that the Ethic Knoll are able to make from an ancient recipe a unique war paint, apparently blood-based, and they are the only people in the world who can. The Glanfadens, it is said, have come to believe this war paint provides tremendous advantage in combat, and the residence of the Ethic Knoll in Twilne Elms is, pred is predicated on the fair trade of the substance. Okay, so this is a faction that can be found in Twin Helms. Interesting. It done. It's finished. Is this trapped? No. A simple fine pike. Okay. Ah, Lady Webb, talk to me. Lady Webb lies still in her bed, an ornate cushion propping her head, uh, her back upright. The blood pooled beneath the gash in her chest is tacky and nearly dry. A shattered glass rests on the floor beneath her dangling hand. You can feel the faint aura of her fading, es uh, of her fading essence in your can. Reach out for it. You make contact and are immersed in a torrent of sensory input and experience. When it calms, you find yourself in the same room, lying in bed with a glass of brandy in your hand. Through the walls from the streets outside come the s sounds of screams and shattering glass and the cacophony of an angry mob. You take a sip and it warms your gullet. Across the room, the door opens behind a patient, steady push. Into the room walks Theos, the floorboards creaking beneath deliberate steps. You wait until the last of the brandy has trickled down your throat before you speak. I was a fool to think I could tame these people. Hmm. You came closer than most. A fine epitaph. No worse than any. She was trying to tame the people? You are concentrating, focusing with all of your energy. It feels as though you are uh, It feels as though you are diving into a stone wall over and over. But it cracks suddenly, unexpectedly, allowing the vaguest wisp of a thought to leap through. What's in Twin Elms? Did you pull that from my thoughts? I've had time to practice. Okay, so the leaden key has interest in Twin Helms. Ah. He walks over to a small table and raises a half-empty brandy bottle to eye level. He seems to approve of the selection and begins to reach for an empty glass. I was saving that for someone. Pity. You know this is how it has to be. Okay, so wait. Pity. He replaces the brandy bottle on the table with care before approaching the bedside. He sits on the edge of the bed next to you. You know this, this is how it has to be. His words come freely, absent of any doubt. He draws a long, curved knife from his belt, smeared with flesh blood. With his left hand, he gently pins your sternum as he raises the knife in the other, its point dangling above your heart. Prove it. Well, she has been waiting for this for a very long time. Theos slips the knife between your ribs and pushes it through. Layers of tissue separate with brittle, papery stiffness, and blood wells up around the blade. 
A pulse of reflex causes you to drop your glass to the floor and you hear it shatter. With the last of your strength, you take his knife hand in both of yours, a question ra radiant in your mind. For an instant, to your great surprise, the pathway to his mind is left open to you, unguarded, and the answer comes. Simple, cataclysmic in its reordering of your thoughts. As Lady Webb, you feel as though you have an answer you've searched for all your life, but in your own mind, her understanding lies just beyond your reach. You look at Theos with the wide eyes of someone seeing for the first time, uh, of someone seeing for the first time, and draw your last breath as a black, velvety darkness descends over you. Well, smoke rises above the city walls in billowing plumes that blacken the sky like a storm. Behind the walls, the riots rage on. Known patrons of Enomancy are forced into hiding as looters ransack their estates and make off with their possessions. Animancers are torn away from their families and dragged from their homes to be stoned to death in the streets. Word had spread immediately that Duke Avar had been assassinated and that an Animancer was to blame. The city wasted little time in exacting revenge and little effort into evaluating guilt. In the center of it all, Brackenberry Sanitarium burned. And down the lane, Hodred House, the last bastion of stability in the Deerwood, had fallen silent. Now safely outside the city gate, your path points eastward to Twin Elms, where Theos is bound, for reasons that remain mysterious as the Leaden Key itself. Yep, and this marks, I believe, the ending of Act 2. Let's see. Okay, so quest completed, the Hermit of Hadrid House. New quest, the Assassin at Large, makes sense. Taxes collected, we earned some money, we lost some money. That's fine. The page unturned comp- oh, this was a quest that Pelagina was on. Okay, so let's check this out. The page unturned. A series of murder that shocked and terrorized the scribes of White Rock Isle, sequestered in their island monastery in the boot of Ondre, they have had little success reaching out to the mainland for help. Though renowned for their integrity and artistic talents, the scribes may be unknowingly harboring someone who is attempting to sabotage their work on forbidden books. After failing to prevent two additional deaths, Palagina and the monks were able to track down the murderer, a secretive scribe of the order that the other monks believed had died years ago. In reality, the scribe had been hiding in the catacombs beneath the monastery and progressively destroying heretical works that he believed spread lies about the origins of the gods. When the monks started to catch on, he killed anyone who raised suspicion. Rather than face punishment, the scribe leapt from the highest tower of the monastery to his death. In the scribe's subterranean laboratory, Pelagina discovered several suspicious vials of thick brown fluid. The monastery's herbalist identified it as a potent poison, the same that had likely been used to kill the monks. Okay, so we got the Blind Monk's Venom, which has five uses, I don't really like it, one per encounter, and it deals 66 raw damage over 30 seconds, and if successful, it's gonna blind, okay, for 10 seconds and sicken for 10 seconds. A violent poison when applied to a weapon inflicts raw damage over time and temporarily leaves the victim blind and say, okay. So nothing major, honestly. Ah, we also have an attack on Kednua that we need to stop. A band of cutthroat bands have been seen lurking throughout the outer forests of Kednua. They will be striking soon, so we will take care of this. And our main quest right now. So the Hermit of Heathered House has finished. Lady Webb has been slain in her, own, in her own bed by Theos, but not before she managed to learn where he was headed. She has done me a great favor, one I suspect she was well aware of. And now we have the Session of Law at Large, which is our, our new main quest. Theos has killed the Duke and Lady Webb, and sent the Fiends Bay into chaos. But Lady Webb saw where he intended to go next, to the city of Twin Helms. It is there I must go if there is any chance of catching up to him. I saw Lady Webb's last moments. Theos killed her in her bed, but not before she got him to admit where he was, he was headed to Twin Helms. 
I wonder if she did that knowing that I'd see it. Okay, interesting. And that's all. Okay, so right now the first thing to do is... Oh! The floods have receded. The pass through uh, Stormwall Gorge is open. Okay, this is very important. Because this will allow us to go to an area we weren't able to go before. Oh. As you cross the bridge, Aeloth draws up beside you. The fires of Defiance Bay cast a shivering, flickering light across one half of his face. The other is in darkness. Please stop. I need to tell you something. Go ahead. I have not been entirely honest about my motives for traveling with you up to this point. When I finished my training in Adir, I was introduced to an organization. All I knew was that they were opposed to the unchecked spread of Enemancy, and that they could guarantee me postings far away from the Seathwood, my father and his Earl. At that time, it was enough. An organization? In the early years, I thought of them as many things. Hooded men, prudent teachers, oh God. the leaden key. Their rules were strict, but their guidance was clear. I sincerely believe they wanted to keep Kith from the folly of their own foolish ambitions. Mm -hmm. I came to the Deerwood a little over a year ago. My orders were to gather information on Animancy in the region. So he was an agent of the Leaden Key. A senior contact met with me every few months to receive my reports and issue new leads. She sent me to Gilded Vale to keep an eye on events surrounding the local lord, but I lost track of her shortly after that. I don't know if she was reassigned, killed, or sacrificed the way you saw. At the time you met me, I'd been on my own for a couple of months. Oh, wait! So, he's talking about the lady that was on the wheel? Okay, so he was sent to Gilded Vale to keep an eye on events from the local lord. Okay. And by the time I met... Okay, so he had been alone for a couple of months. You knew I was coming. I couldn't have. I'd been out of contact with my superiors for months. Okay. I needed some kind of direction. After that scrape with the locals, I was ready to get out of town. But then you mentioned the hooded figures in the machine. And I was sure you were on the trail of the leaden key. And I was correct in a way. What we found wasn't what I expected. I knew the Leaden Key was trying to stop Animancy, but I didn't realize how far they'd gone. Murder, sabotage, abandoning entire districts to shambling horrors. And now the whole city is up in flames. Mm. I'm still not sure about Animancy, but I know I've been following the wrong master. Please accept my apology and my service. Let me fight with you to stop Theos. Well, he's been with me for a long time and I've helped him out. He's opened up to me, so I don't really expect him to backstab me. I kind of I kind of trust him at this point. Mm, okay. Yeah, and this I think is the is the the most friendly answer. I forgive you a lot, but I want you beside me, not behind me. I'm not asking you to trade one master for another. That would be an honor. Before we move on, I'd like to discuss a few things. How may I be of service? How exactly did you come to join the Leaden Key? Oh, he doesn't speak. Oh. As it often is with such follies, I was young and directionless. Directionless. The Leaden Key promised some of the structure I was lacking, and they offered me a future far removed from service to my father's Earl. Animancy is, possibly, even more controversial an idea than it is here. The practice has been outlawed for 600 years, but prohibition has a way of breeding curiosity. The success and relative acceptance that Animancy has found here, and in the Velen Republic, spurred the renewed interest in idea. The Leaden Key began recruiting more aggressively, and I was in the final period of my training when one of my instructors reached out to me. He shrugs. As I said, 
It was a welcome departure from my father's plans, and after seeing a few of my colleagues abandon their studies in magic to pursue animancy in the republics, I was convinced that something needed to be done to stop the spread. Okay. And we haven't talked about this, so now you, uh, now you understand a little more about Isilmir. He wrinkles his nose. No thanks to that animancer. My spleen? Black bile? Come on. Bellasage's method was flawed, but you still learned something, didn't you? Only because you and I have a lick of good sense between us. But the average person? Show them a shiny gadget in the hands of an expert and they'll believe anything. Hmm. <laughs> well, that's true. People are too easily led. Yes. People need something to believe, someone to follow. And the danger of following a bunch of animants is that even they don't know what they're headed, where they're headed. How long were you in Gilded Vale? He shrugs, fidgeting with the hem of his sleeve. Not much longer than you. As you saw, it was hardly the, the haven that had been advertised. Okay, and about your parents? He looks at you cautiously. Yes. It sounds like your father had a problem with his temper. He had a problem with my mother's hamnag. Even though they agreed upon it long ago, that the financial benefits would be considerable, that it was little different from his role as the Earl's steward, it ate at him. And so he drank and raged. When she was home, he raged at her. And when she wasn't, he raged at me. More than anything, he wanted me to become an arcane knight in the service of his Earl. I think he felt this would validate his chosen career and master. He was a firm man, as you saw, but in the end I became a successful wizard, due in no small part to his strictness. Nonsense. You accomplished that on your own, and you would have been fine without him pushing you. Are you so certain? I didn't know what I wanted from my life then. I surely wouldn't have been so focused with our little direction. What's a hamnag? A ceremonial marriage between folk and elf. Ah. Because the Adir mainland has historically been split between the two races, we have many institutions that are designed to normalize relations. Our monarchy is headed by folk, but an elven consort rules alongside the, re the reigning Firkoning or Mequin. This is the most prominent example of a Heimneg. In many cases, a Heimneg allows two households to pool resources. Among the aristocracy, Heimnegs consolidate power. Sometimes, as in my mother's case, a hamnag is a means for a noble to add another administrator to his or her household. Consorts are received with almost the same level of respect as their noble counterparts, which can be extremely useful. Of course, hamnags are sometimes used to sanitize an extramarital affair. <laughs> he shrugs. I don't know that it's really any better, but it seems to satisfy common notions of decency. And elf and folk unions are sterile, which no doubt eases some concerns. And why was your go uh, mother gone so often? She was invited to join a Heimneg with a landed thane when I was very young. His estate was a five-day ride from our home in the Sithwood, so that was part of it. He gives you the smallest of frowns. The real issue, however, was my father. Despite his initial agreement to the arrangement, father was never happy with it. So, it's kind of what we, what we just learned. He would hound and harangue my mother when she was, when she was home. He wanted to know whether she was intimate with the Thane, and no matter how many times she swore she wasn't, it was never enough. As you can imagine, that led to her coming home much less often, even though she still supported us financially. Okay. I'm sure she was trying to take care of you in her own way. I believe so. She had an important role managing the Lord Thane's lands and administrati administrative duties, and even though she was away, she provided well for us. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. And that's all. Okay. So, we've learned a little bit more about Mr. Aloth. And right now, we're gonna go to Kednua to stop this attack that's brewing in our lands. And after that, my destination is gonna be the Stormwall Gorge, I believe. Okay, so I think I have to do this and then do the manual resolve. And I should have the help of my mercenaries for the fight. Stop.
Okay, so the game doesn't auto-pause, but yeah, I do have them. I have a Mind Striker, I have a Cleric, and I have... I only have three? It's kind of rough. Okay, so we have a fighter trying to clear us out, which sucks. Let me see if I can knock him down before he does that. We have a wizard, and we have another wizard, and then we have a couple of rogues. Okay, so you are gonna swap into melee, because you're gonna tank this area. You are on that one. Uh, Durance fall back. You shoot this guy in the face. Oh, what is this? Oh, I forgot! Right, we got this! Um, wait, what is it? Dominion of the Sleepers. One per rest. The user gains plus two to every single one of the stats for 25 seconds. Not bad. The Watcher peers into the sleeping memories of his pre or previous lives, drawing upon their power to enhance all of his or her attributes. Okay, but for right now, I just wanted to shoot this guy in the face. And Aloth. What are you going to do, Aloth? I guess I could kind of cast a wall of force here to make everybody coming in get hobbled. That might be my best option. Yeah, sure, go for that. Okay, let's uh, make this move slowly and let's see how this goes. Okay, so he's fighting that one. Durance is over there. Let's get a painful interdiction. This slow is going to be very bad because it's going to hit everybody. But I can suppress afflictions... Uh, which can help us out very very much Okay, so let's let's see If we can get this done properly Okay, the wall of force is up, but It's not gonna do much because I don't think people are gonna go through uh, Eder and Durance and um, and Kana Why did this swap places? This was weird Okay, well he's blinded that doesn't really matter I blinded and stunned this bandit over here. Let's kill him. The wall of force is up. I'm gonna toss out a chill fog. Uh, in this region, I'm gonna try and hit this bandit as well as both of the wizards. I think it's gonna be my best option. And you, I think you can just, you know, silent scream this guy maybe. Or that one to make sure he's not. Oh, I think he's fighting my henchman over here. Yeah, he is. Let's stun him. But I do believe that this is more than fine for us. Let's get a buff. Because, yeah, this guy didn't even get a chance to, to slow my party. He only slowed my, my friends over here, as you can see on top left. Yeah. Okay. So, she's stunning, you're fighting, you're fighting, everything seems fine. Yeah, this is, this is fine. I am gonna cancel my chill fog though, because my own friends are coming in and I don't want them to get hit by that. So I will just terrify people in this region and then just start shooting. Okay, he's dead, good. Focus on this guy. She's gonna stun him as well. Okay, stunned and took 100 damage. Lovely. My henchmen are gonna kill him, so let's focus on something else like the bandits over here. Okay, you can give us some more accuracy. You guys are terrified, which is lovely. So you can just start tossing out some books. And then just shoot. Okay, so it there has killed that guy. Let's kill this one. These mages are dead, so everything should be fine. And I'm gonna rest after this, so Shining Beacon. Wonderful, my friends. Of course. A perfect fight. Pretty much. <laughs> okay, so the fight is over. I'm not sure if I can loot. Oh, I can. Nice. So we have fine breastplate and a fine s -tog. Looks a little healthier oh. than before. A blood-soaked grimoire. What hell? It sucks, boss. <laughs> it sucks very much. Uh, I'm gonna take this just because and put it over there and I think that's it yeah okay 
So I'm gonna go inside, I'm gonna see what kind of materials I have in my chest. From the periodic, uh, you know, gainings? I, I don't know the word. The things that get dropped over here periodically. <laughs> okay, so we have all that, that's okay. And I don't have any quests currently. Uh, what, what is this? Three of eight. Wait, I only have three. I had five. They weren't... What? They shouldn't have died. Ooh. Plus two prestige and plus four. This is quite good. Yeah, get that. Okay. This one is mine. And let's get you and you. Sure. And maybe one more prestige here and one more prestige here. Okay. So we're gonna have a, a slight upkeep, but it's not it's not very concerning, honestly. I think pretty much everything we gain from our taxes should be enough to pay them off. Okay. So we are now, I believe, in Act Three. I'm not sure if it. If I can see that, actually. Does it say... Journal... Mm, what? Oh! Hey, <laughs> hey. Um, yeah, it, it doesn't say. But yeah, I think it's Act 3. Uh, we finished our quest in Defiance Bay. We finished our quests with Lady Web. So... I think one thing I would like to do is go back into Defiance Bay to Brackenberry and see if I can go into the house Dominel. But I think Defiance Bay is currently locked out to us. I'll have to try it. Because in case there was fighting in house Dominel, I want to loot the place. <laughs> uh, if not, we're going to continue on and we will be going into the Stormwall Gorge. This was the place where everything was flooded and we couldn't progress, but once you finish it... Oh yeah, it, it, yeah. It, it's grayed out. We cannot go there. At least not yet. Um, this was flooded and we couldn't progress, but now the flood has subsided, so now we can access areas that we couldn't before. And, you know, it's also the place that, that connects the western portion of the map into this portion of the map that leads into Twin Helms. So, that's going to be the idea for the next episode. As always, my friends, thank you so much for being here with me in the channel, watching Simples of Eternity. I hope you guys are enjoying the adventure. If you have any questions, any suggestions, you know what to do, leave a comment below. If you are enjoying the content, consider subscribing. It's a free and easy way to support the channel, and videos are coming out every single day. And I hope to see you all in the next episode. Until then, stay safe, everyone.